Okay, good morning, and sorry for that delay. I do apologise, as we said, we had a slight uh, IT issue, shall we say. Um, good morning and welcome to today's uh, licensing subcommittee hearing, uh, Tuesday, 23rd of January at 11, let's call it 11.10, shall we, rather than 11 a.m. A uh, warm welcome to all of you here today and also to those uh, watching on the Council's YouTube channel. Uh, details of business are obviously in your agenda packs. Uh, for those present in the room and intend to speak, please know that you will be filmed. Unfortunately, people over here, you just see the back of your heads. Right? Uh, you will be filmed and the statement you make will be recorded and made public. So please be aware of that. And for those solely observing in the room today, you may wish to know that the camera is angled away from yourselves. So you're in the clear, don't worry, you two. Um, uh, and it will be pointed at our end. Uh, at the end of the public part of the meeting, uh, when we move to what's called the confidential matters and deliberations, the live broadcast will be cut and then we'll come back uh, at the very end when we've made our decision. Um, regarding the fire alarm, I'm not expecting a fire alarm today, uh, but it could happen. So if it does, please follow the green signs. There's one over here to my right and the door over there. Uh, please follow the sign down the stairs. Don't use the elevators, please, during the fire alarm. And then we assemble, as I always say, quite aptly for licensing outside the slug and lettuce. Now, um, I'll just make a few announcements and introductions as well. I think it's important we know who's here, and make, who's making decisions, who's making the deliberations. I myself, I'm Councillor Dominic Gillam. I'm uh, Chairman of this subcommittee and also taking part in the deliberations and making decisions are Councillor Nallan and Councillor Roy Chamdow. Uh, to assist us in making the decisions, I have uh, Rasheen Hogan from the legal team to make sure that our, any decision we would make and the, the deliberations are legal and just, and also to make sure that we cross the T's and dot the I's, we have Neil Fraser from Democratic Services. Uh, you may well have already met Ian Means from our regulatory services, I think they call themselves now. And also, what I'm going to ask now is you all to introduce yourselves. Very quick, simple quiz. You just press the button, say your name, say where you are, where you're from, and then press the button off. And we'll start off with Emily. Good morning. I'm Emily Mitchell, Hillington Police Licensing Officer. Adam Stitson, Anti-Social Behaviour and Environment Team, Hillington Council. Uh, Stephanie Waterford, Licensing Service, representing the Licensing Authority. Uh, Philip Samarakis, Solicitor. I'm Caroline Santi, and I'm the Acting GM of Home Bar and Kitchen. Uh, James Iteo, part of uh, MLG Holdings. You're all very welcome today to this meeting. Okay, so we'll move on now, and I'll do apologies of absence. Any apologies, Neil? No apologies, Chairman. Uh, members, any declarations of interest in matters coming before this committee? Thank you, that's uh, none. Uh, I can confirm that this, uh, the whole agenda will be in part one, and we spoke about how it will be on, uh, on YouTube as well. Uh, if we do feel that any items are sensitive, we will then move into a part two. We'll ask members of the public to leave, and then we'll continue without YouTube. Um, can you just confirm I have no other matters that have been confirmed as urgent? No matter, Chairman. Okay, great. So we move forward now to uh, agenda item five, which is an application for a variation of a premises license, home, bar and restaurant. Ian. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, uh, committee members. Um, my role is to introduce the matter for the committee and for the benefit of uh, everyone here. Um, before I explain and introduce the main papers for the hearing, there was an addendum, which is hopefully you have that addendum. Let me just run through the addendum very quickly and so you can note some of the changes therein. Can we just confirm, members, you all have a copy of the addendum? <coughs> Councillor Allen? Yeah. Hang on, there should be one each. Hang on. Okay, if one of the officers could please pass over the addendum to Councillor Allen. So my members have a copy of it. And the applicant should have a copy of the addendum. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> so, moving forward, um, item number one. Um, starts with a minor adjustment and it requires to be made in the main pack a minor adjustment to page 13 appendix 1 of the report which is officers recommendations at the top of the box there at the top of that page there is a box where there is the words activity hours for alcohol and regulated entertainment a correction will be made to remove the words and regulated entertainment so it just reads activity hours for alcohol. That's the first amendment, please. Item two are attached plans. Uh, these are further plans to the original report. Plan one is an area to show distance between a property in Harecroft uh, Lane 
and the house, this small housing development there uh, to the front of Home Bar. And uh, the second one places some house numbers on those houses in Haircroft. Uh, in Haircroft. <coughs> uh, item number three, uh, condition three, Annex two uh, of the licence requires the acoustic report to be prepared uh, following the, the original application and grant of the licence uh, last year, uh, and that's attached to the papers. And the final one it is uh, submitted by the applicants, which are menus, uh, drinks and food menus from the premises for your attention. Those are the alterations to the, to the main document pack. Um, what the application is for is this is a hearing to consider an application for a variation of a current premises licence for Home Bar, which is a restaurant public house in Ickenham. There have been a number of representations, three representations from responsible authorities, two from interested parties, uh, being local councillors, and a further nine from residents, either as singles or from an address, as a pair. Um, the premise is a detached building situated on the corner of High Road Ickenham and Austin's Lane. It has two doors to the front, the main door leading onto a small car park, uh, and another door leading onto the front patio area. Both of these doors are lobbied internally. It has a further exit door leading onto the rear or side eating area and patio. The premises are newly refurbished and are to a high standard. This new application, this variation application, seeks to add an extra hour to the opening times on Friday and Saturday nights, currently being 01.30 hours, proposed to be 02.30 hours. It also seeks to add additional hours for the sale of alcohol and provision of entertainment to be added to the sale of late night refreshment to the licence after 2300, which is a time when late night refreshment needs to be licensed. Requesting both alcohol and entertainment currently from 12.30 to 1.30 and adding late night refreshment also until 1.30. So bringing basically all, all matters up to 1.30. The absent case also seeks to adjust a condition in Annex 2 of the licence which relates to last entry customers. And to change this condition from the current 2300 hours to midnight. I have made observations to assist the committee at paragraph seven, and I've included a recommendation at appendix one. Uh, this report is therefore submitted for the committee's consideration. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Um, members, at any points you wish to question just on that part? Ian, can you just clarify, you, you mentioned the activity hours for the sale of alcohol in your recommendation on page 13. Um, so you've asked for the removal of the regulated entertainment. So what's your recommendation regarding the regulated entertainment hours? I think what I've said there is, is that the recommendation is to uh, take the whole of this application, but only to allow the extension of alcohol sales. So just to clarify, the regulated entertainment to remain as it is? Entertainment, uh, yes, to remain as it is, and to move alcohol hours by um, a short period, maybe half an hour onwards. 30 minutes from what I can see. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Members, any other points at this time? No? Okay. Moving along quite swiftly. Okay, so we, we all have an order of business, I hope, uh, in front of you, and that sort of guides us all where we should be going and which point. Mr. Samarak has taken his glasses off, so he knows that he's up now at this point. So I go over now to the applicant. Chair, before, um, before I, I do start my presentation, I wonder if I could ask uh, Mr. Be Mr. Means through you just one question and clarification. We have the, uh, later on, as you'll see, the subcommittee where we have deliberations and discussion. I'm sure you can ask him questions then. It was just for members to clarify what yeah. we were looking at. Your question of him can come later on in the subcommittee deliberation part. Oh, okay? I, I appreciate that. It, it, it may short circuit matters if I could deal with it now. We have a protocol. I'd like to adhere to that. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, well, well, sir, as you've heard, there is an application before you today to, to vary the, the licence. And I think in, in terms of the narrow areas that we'd like you to focus on 
um, this morning following the uh, appendix report that you've had from, um, from Mr Means. Um, what we'd ask you to do is to consider effectively three things. Uh, that is to um, consider an extension for the sale of alcohol now by half an hour, which is what uh, Mr Means has, has recommended. Uh, so rather than the application being for the full hour, which is what we were originally seeking, we're asking you to consider Mr Means' recommendation, which is to extend the hours on Fridays and Saturdays by half an hour rather than that one hour now. I hope that's, that's clear. Uh, just to clarify, is that for regulated entertainment as well? No. No. Um, the only other um, requirement for you to consider extending is, is for late night refreshment, and that was the point I was going to ask Mr Means if he was happy with that, and I understand that he is. Thirdly, it relates to the last entry time. The application before you at the moment is that is extended until midnight. Uh, following discussions that, that we've had with the police this morning, we're asking you to consider extending the last entry time until 11.30, sir. I understand that the police are in agreement with that. So those, those are the three things. An extra half an hour on Fridays and Saturdays for alcohol, late night refreshment, and an extra half an hour as such for the last entry time. So you will have read that the uh, premises were purchased about a year ago. There's been a substantial investment. Um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say the, the overall project costs, but it, it's, um, it, it, it's certainly quite significant. Um, what, what's resulted in that is a very well run, very, very highly refurbished premises. Uh, I'm, I'm told that the clientele are certainly 30 to 40 years upwards. Um, at times, the majority of customers in the venue um, are, are female. Sometimes the split is 80 20. Uh, there's been a move towards dining, and it's primarily marketed as a restaurant with a bar. And certainly, the, the wet sales, um, particularly in terms of, of draft beers, have, have fallen off. And that's replaced certainly by bottled beers and by wine and by cocktails. So, overall, uh, a very well run. Uh, highly refurbished, well-respected venue that's operated very well, certainly since the last uh, year. Um, there are a number of conditions on the licence which we say support the licensing objectives and are being complied with. You've got in the appendix the acoustic report, so that was commissioned last year. Uh, that's resulted in the noise limiter being installed and set, and that's, that's operated. You, you can obviously talk to um, and ask questions of, of Caroline and James today, but they will tell you that staff are trained to observe that those conditions are complied with at all times. Clearly the focus of the deliberations this morning will be in relation to the prevention of, 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 of nuisance, and certainly they have a very active management plan in place to ensure that uh, noise is kept to a minimum. And particularly obviously on Fridays and Saturdays, that means ensuring that the outside areas are properly policed, uh, that the side garden where diners and, and, and customers can go is closed I think, at 9.30. And then at the front of the, the premises, uh, a limit of 10 people smoking <coughs> outside. They don't have a requirement to have door staff. There's no condition on the license to that effect. But they do have a minimum of two door staff on. Uh, sorry if I'm wrong about that. But certainly they do, they do have... Um, two door staff on. Uh, Mr Samarak has told us, you've got us all flipping because we all read that there's two door staff from 8am till close. Yes, sorry, my apologies. Yeah, they do. I think, I they, think they're the only venue that, that. that... Yeah, that's right. They, they do have them on. Um, and they, they operate a very successful door. You've got, um, although he's not sitting up here this morning, you've got uh, Martin Fox from Frontline Security who sits behind me, and he will tell you, if you wanted to ask questions of him, that this is a very easy premises for them to, to, to operate. They don't have any problems at all at this venue. Um, there are other premises in the vicinity. We're not here today to, to throw stones at any other venues, but some of the concerns that have been expressed by residents relate to noise of patrons, um, bottles and glasses and litter that you, you, you would have read. Um, all we can say is that that's not representative of the customers that we have in the venue. And there is a very strict policy on ensuring that customers don't leave with, with bottles or glasses, and, and doormen are on duty until the last customer has gone. So we, we see this application um, having been based upon the experience of run a premises successfully for the last 12 months as being appropriate. 
Um, you'll also have read in the report that we've operated, I think, with eight temporary event notices last year. They've all been successful. We've had no noise complaints. And I think also between Christmas and New Year, there was an impromptu visit by Environmental Health just to see whether there were any um, potential noise issues, and there were none. So, sir, um, I, obviously we, we, we're not here to hear from the residents this morning, but we've, we've read the letters that have been submitted. We, we were surprised um, by Mr Bullock's comments. He's the gentleman, if you're facing the front of our venue, who lives to the right of us. And he's made reference to phoning the venue a number of times, asking us to stick to our opening hours. And that's, that's raised a degree of surprise because we don't have any record of him contacting the venue at all. And um, that, that has been quite a surprising you know, revelation from him. So we have tried to reach out to him and also to particularly the Freemans who sit at the back of the venue. They overlook the rear of the premises because they've expressed some um, concern about, about noise levels. Um, ju just one point to make about that. Um, so although we're not asking you to consider increasing regulatory entertainment today, when the acoustic report was commissioned, um, so that is referred to in the appendix um, addendum sheet, specifically the acoustic consultant was tasked with considering background noise levels at both the Freemans and at the Bullocks. So even though we're not obviously asking you to consider extending hours for entertainment today, we'll, we'll certainly look again um, to ensure that, that both the, um, Mr. and Mrs. Freeman and, and Mr. Bullock are, are, are contacted, and if they want to come into the venue and see the noise limit, they're more, they're more than welcome to do so. So I don't think I've got anything else really to say. I think that um, our application, you know, is, is, is as modified is, is quite reasonable. It's motivated particularly by us wanting to keep the customers that we have in the venue and, and extend the food offering. That's the reason why we submitted the food menus for you to consider. So last food orders uh, at the venue will be 11.30. Uh, at the moment, um, food orders end around 10.30. That's pretty much the last time, isn't it, Caroline? Yeah, so um, our, our motivation for this is to continue um, keeping a safe venue, uh, encourage our customers to stay and obviously eat and, and, and have something to drink and, um, and be entertained. So obviously we'll respect the need that uh, from half past midnight that any music that's played in the venue will be simply background <coughs> music and that gives us uh, an hour to wind things down and let customers you know, move on their way. Is there anything you want to say, Caroline or James, in this report? Do you want to say at this stage? Mm -hmm. Fine. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Samarakis. Uh, if you'd be so kind now, just to get in your papers, page four, we'll go through it. We have two very useful grids yeah. that indicate the hours that you've applied for, but you've now asked for a modification of that, so I want to make sure members are fully aware of these hours and the changes. So, if you look at 3.5, which is the license applicate, uh, activity hours current, they obviously the, the state of state, and then you have 3.6, which is your proposed changes. Um, it's just Friday and Saturday that we're looking at, uh, and what you're saying, just to clarify, is where it uh, 3.6 says uh, 1.30, it's the application, what you're asking now is to consider 1 a.m. 1, 1 on those two. That's right, so 3.6, 1 a.m. Yeah. Um, well, 3.5 3 is the license for activity hours that we're proposing. So Fridays and Saturdays, the second column would be changing that from 0130 to 0100 for Fridays and Saturdays. And the heading of the column, it should say proposed terminal hours for alcohol and late night refreshment. And then so over the page at 3.6 opening hours, Fridays and Saturdays, the proposed column to be changed to no change. Sorry, in effect, you'll be reducing what we used to call drinking up time to half hour. Is that yeah. correct? That, that's right, rather than an hour, yes. So members, if you look at uh, the box 3.6 on Fridays and Saturdays, on the far right, it will be one... At one o'clock, sorry, one o'clock and one o'clock on Friday and Saturdays, and one thirty, one thirty, for the drinking up time. Yes. 
Mr. Samarakis, you, you mentioned SIAs. Yes. You said that uh, they have SIAs from 8 o'clock till close of business. Uh, it's not a condition, but they are willing to uh, adhere to that currently. Is that correct? Absolutely. Oh, sorry. On Friday, start at 6. Oh, fine. 6. 6 o'clock on Friday. Thank you for that, Ms. Santis. I appreciate that. Uh, and are you willing to adhere to that? Yes, definitely. <laughs> That's very good to hear. Thank you. Yes. Members, any other questions uh, of clarification before we go forward and hear from the uh, responsible authorities and interest parties? But we'll do that in the subcommittee. Thank you. I was just trying to clarify so we understand exactly what the application is now but with the modifications that have been attached. Okay, so we'll now go to responsible authorities. Uh, we'll, we'll go uh, left to right, much easier. That's you. Uh, yeah, well done, Emily. Yeah, you worked that out. Well I made a representation um, regarding their application only on um, part, co sorry, condition number five, which was to extend their hours of entry time. Um, I had asked that it remained the same and stayed at um, 11 p.m., However, uh, having spoken with them outside the room, um, I am in agreement that I would be happy to extend this to 23, 30 hours on Friday and Saturday if they are to be serving bar food till this time as well. So it's in, in line with the, the, the food side of things. Um, other than that, I have no representations for this venue. Okay, thank you very much indeed. That's short and sweet. Adam? Adam, I guess you're here on behalf of Nathan Welsh, is that correct? Uh, that is correct, yes. So I'm here representing the antisocial behaviour and environment team <coughs> from the council. Um, thank you very much. I note that um, there have not been um, any complaints made to the ASB and environment team regarding this premises. Um, neither have there been any service requests for the out-of-hours team during its hours of operation to respond to noise complaints. Um, there have been temporary event notices previously issued to this premises. Um, there is a concern generally when premises are asking to extend uh, times of opening, um, especially with regard to live and recorded music. Um, it can cause a nuisance to neighbouring properties as we've already discussed. Um, there is also an issue regarding um, nuisance caused to uh, neighbours when patrons are leaving the premises. I note from the um, acoustic assessment provided that um, there are uh, lobby doors. This will obviously help control any noise escalating out of the premises. Um, I also note that um, there is an undertaking that these lobby doors will be closed when music is being played in the premises. And I would agree that this would also lead to um, attainment of the noise, leading it to cause less disturbance to neighbours. Um, I also note that um, a recommendation has been made in the acoustic assessment that um, a member of staff make periodic observations of the noise level. I would confirm that this is very much a good idea and one that is encouraged by the council and one that we would very much like to see progressed and adhered to. Um, I would also like to um, uh, make a comment that um, other premises have also undertaken measures to um, deal with the issue of patrons leaving establishments where there have been issues raised about um, public order issues once they've left the premises themselves. Um, other premises have undertaken issues such as um, making sure that people leaving are staggered, that people have um, taxis have arrived, that they have somewhere to go immediately rather than simply congregating outside the premises um, en masse. Um, they've also placed um, staff further along the roads to make sure people are, are guided quietly as much as possible. Um, those are the only points I have to make at the current time. Okay, uh, thank you, Adam. Adam, as you said, you, you are here on, on behalf of Nathan Welsh. We have Appendix Item 3A, which is uh, an email conversation between Nathan and David Holmes. I'm sure you're aware of that item. Uh, it says in the email from Nathan Welsh, uh, can you attend each night of your shift? We only have the report of one actual visit. Can you confirm that there was only one took place, or is there other information that we haven't got? Uh, there is only record of that one visit having taken place. It looks as if they were not able due to um, 
of service demand to, to attend on, on other nights of action. Thank you. Uh, also, in uh, the agenda item three, uh, Nathan's actual representation, he talks that they've had temporary event notices which have gone on until 2 a.m. And you confirmed there's been no uh, contact with residents, complaints regarding noise, crime disorder, or any of the four items subjected has been not adhered to in that time? Uh, none, no complaints have come through to the ASB and Environment Team or, or the House and House Team regarding those incidents. And are you aware of any members' inquiries that have been made by members of the Council who have been informed of issues? I they would go to ASBIT, wouldn't they? Uh, they would do, yes. No, I have seen no, no members' inquiries related to this particular So what we're saying, really, there's been no communication from any member of the public to the Council as a whole regarding issues created by... The, the, the applicant. N none that I'm aware of now. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Uh, Stephanie Waterford, please. No, thank you. Um, I will just echo um, my colleague's sentiments, really, um, and just say that there have been a number of events involving temporary event notices, um, all of which have gone fine. Um, we've already heard that there have been no um, complaints. Um, however, um, I would say that the permanent extension to 2.30 um, perhaps would have been likely to cause a nuisance to nearby local residents. Um, and while I don't believe there are sufficient grounds to refuse the application outright, I would request the licensing committee have regard to Ian Means's recommendation in Annex 1, um, as it seems like a sensible compromise. Um, thank you. Um, just one point, Stephanie. In your report, Appendix 3, uh, page 35, what is not accepted is moving the goalposts. Can you just clarify, because I thought a variation was moving the goalposts, and variations are done up and down the land all the time. What do you mean by moving the goalposts to extend activities? Um, it's a change in the, operate, the parameters of operation. So whilst local residents may accept that there are, is a um, operation that they, they live near to a pub, what's often not accepted is when those parameters of operation are changed, and it's for the licensing authority to consider whether those parameters are still appropriate and in line with the licensing right. objectives. So a variation is, is accepted, but what change in parameters they, they ask it for? Because we've heard that they're actually going more towards food, so I don't understand why... Well, the, cha the change in parameters would be the hours of operation. It's a variation? Yes. But that's not accepted, you said. What is not accepted is moving the goalposts. By local residents. So where I'm saying that local residents generally accept that there are that there is a level of disturbance. It has to be read in, the, in line with the oh, I see. On you're the saying page. that, just to clarify, you're saying that local residents don't accept variations, but we as a council obviously do with Yeah, and we can see that by the nine representations right, okay. that we've got. Thank you. Great. Any other points of clarification? No? Whizzing through. Brilliant. Um, now, we don't have the other parties here. Uh, we have some representations from residents. Uh, I think it's just and right that we look at them. We've all read them. We've seen, we've seen the red that we've seen as a cluster of areas. Uh, Ian, as uh, the, the, the presenting officer, we're just I'm just going to ask a few questions regarding what we've had from residents, uh, members as well, just to clarify what the residents are saying, because after all, we always like to put residents first. Yes. Uh, Ian, so I'll start off. We've had uh, representations. We've heard about this gentleman who hasn't, uh, who's claimed, I think it was he said, that he'd made some telephone conversations we don't have. Uh, does the premises have an incident book that you've seen that would log that sort of communication currently? Um, I did, I did a, <clears throat> as part of this uh, report, I attended the premises. Um, I think the premises is supposed to have an incident book. However, Caroline tends to keep most of it on her mobile phone. Um, <laughs> and the incident book on my attendance wasn't it wasn't produced when sorry, I was Sorry, Carol, just to clarify, the question is directed to him. We will have a subcommittee bit later on, just coming up, where we'll get involved. But yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying to the officer, when you attended, was there an incident book that you could see? There was an incident book, and it's that one there, but there was nothing written in it. Uh, OK, fair enough. OK. Um, we also heard uh, concerns about noise. We've heard from Adam Stitson regarding a noise log, which I suppose is very similar to the incident book. Uh, is that commonplace? Do we have... Uh, bars and clubs and licensed space in this area that had an incident book and a noise log as well where they monitor? No, it's not commonplace to have a noise log, no. Members, is there any points you've seen from the emails we've had from all these residents regarding their concerns? 
Councillor Chamdow, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just look at on page 41, uh, the email from Gail Parkins and Bob Finn. Uh, they, in addition to the points about noise they're making about, especially at the back of the venue, um, not sure what time they're talking about. What time, could you just clarify what time uh, patrons are allowed in the back? And secondly, they make the point about uh, a litter pick, or, or was it bottles and glasses? Uh, are we aware of whether patrons do take these out with them, or there's any reporting, or do the license holders conduct one of these litter picks out? We, we have seen it in other license premises. I didn't hear your first question, Councillor. The second question uh, regarding the litter pick is that geographically, um, the main entrance to the home bar um, would be quite difficult for residents to litter pick uh, or for customers for home bar to get into Haircroft uh, estate. Very difficult because it's uh, completely surrounded by trees and fencing and it's actually a gated estate um, and, it, and it was not allowing easy pedestrian entrance at all. So any litter picking that they talk about I would assume they've had to come out of their estate, walk around into Austin's Lane and maybe address something in Austin's Lane, being very good citizens. But I can't imagine they put to pick anything out of Haircroft. My first part was regards the noise at the back of the bar. Councillors, the, uh, within, within the papers uh, there is a distance measure in your addendum. Um, we were, we were looking at that and we decided to put in the papers uh, second page of the addendum a measure uh, which working out on our computer systems from the front of the bar to the nearest house in Haircroft, 45.6 metres. Sorry, Councillor Chandler, I was talking about the rear. It clearly says it gardens at the bar in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at page 41, yep, got they say gardens at the bar which would be at the rear, wouldn't be on that side that faces uh, Haircroft. Representation may have come from someone in Haircroft, but the concern is that the gardens at the bar... Just to clarify, that's uh, 2130 and 2200 hours. Yeah. yeah the front, there's obviously a front patio, uh, which goes on later than the, the rear or side patio. For the residents in, uh, in Haircroft, uh, the side patio, or outside dining area, as they call it, would be protected largely by the building itself from any noise escape towards Haircroft because it sits the other side, more towards Mr Bullock's address. Um, it would be the front patio probably that that comment is made about and that closes at 10.30. 10.30. Thank you, Ian. Uh, members, any other points? Councillor Allen, just, just on these, we're just looking at the residents' emails at the moment before we go to the discussion. Yes. You press the button for us, Councillor Allen. Sorry, jolly good. Okay, so I think we've looked at all the uh, residents' concerns. Um, there was one that there was, there was talk of walking past the bar. It didn't stipulate a time, here, uh, and it was from a, a couple. Now, obviously, the application is not looking at the current status of Home Bar. It's looking at an extension of hours. So if this is already ongoing, I don't see how it, that would be exasperated by an increase of hours. What I want to ask you is, um, we have residents' concerns, Going forward, I mean, if we were or minded to look at an application to extend the hours, what, what recourse do these residents have? How, what could they do now if it was that it was a problem come from this licence application? Uh, Councillor, there's always, there's always the option of, of a review. Um, a review. Explain that. I'm conscious that people may be watching online or look at it back later. Time. Can you explain the review process so that residents are aware that whatever is decided and decreed, that, that they know that they can look at it as a review? Yeah, you know, in, in the same way as we're sitting here today uh, making application to extend hours and to alter conditions and to adjust the way the premises runs, uh, by application from a resident, uh, single resident, uh, on, a, uh, on, a, on a concern that, that we agree is a concern within the licensing uh, office, um, we can have this hearing again to hear their concerns and decide whether to change the license. That's what it is really. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, uh, we've heard from the responsible policies, the applicant, and we'll say that we've heard, we've, we've noted the comments from the other parties, I feel, and we, we've given them a fair shout by discussing their emails as well. Uh, so now we are going to go to the, uh, the discussion. 
uh, and I ask you, as always, to keep it civil. I know I look at myself and Councillor Allen, we try and keep it civil. So <laughs> if we can, uh, through the Chair, please, any points of clarification? One thing I want to highlight is the, the hours you've talked about. Um, the sale of alcohol is, a, you're now looking at a half hour increase on Fridays. Uh, you're also looking for a half hour increase on the last entry. And you're looking for a late night refreshment beyond the, up to tw uh, 23.30, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, well, well, no, actually 23.30, you won't need to Sorry, sir. So, so um, it's an extra half an hour until one o'clock for the sale of alcohol and late night refreshment on Fridays and Saturdays and last entry time um, to 11.30 on both of those nights. The refreshment on to the end of, as with the... Okay, thank you, Russian D. Any discussion, members, at any points you want to question? Anyone? Councillor Allen? Um, the residents are talking about bottles and glasses. Can I ask if you've got any signs up on the premises saying to, res uh, saying to your patrons that they should not be taking bottles and glasses off site? Um, there's no glasses allowed outside after 11, and the doorman um, speaks to monitor that, make sure no bottles or glasses are outside. Um, there are signs on the door saying no glasses or bottles outside. And like I said, the garden closes at 10.30, there's no glasses out there either, because you have a bar back that goes round and picks up any empty glasses. Councillor Councillor Chandler, um, just to clarify, you have off sales, is that correct? We can do, but we don't do that. No. That's what I'm saying. So there may well be that case, but because they have the licence to take them off site, it could be conscious of that. Okay. Well, that was a very quick deliberation. Mr. Samarak, any points you want to make at this point where we're in the questions? Any questions you have of our responsible authorities here? So there's only um, in relation to um, Mr Means' report. Mr Means, um, in terms of your recommendation, would you be happy to include late night refreshment within that? Yes, I would. I, th I think there's very little problems come out from mainly restaurant or food-led premises, and I think this would assist in the general way that people would use and leave the premises. Thank you very much. So what do we do now? We do closing remarks and we go in reverse order. So, uh, Stephanie, we'll walk along uh, and do the responsible authority, so if you go first. Anything you'd like to add? Uh, nothing from me, Chairman. Good, thank you. Adam, anything at all? Uh, only point to add is the uh, mention of signs made me think that if, you, um, if there were a sign reminding patrons that it's a residential area and uh, they should leave the premises quietly, that would be another good thing to do. I think if you look at your pack, I think there is a picture to that effect already, Adam. Apologies for that. It's okay, I know you're, you're subbing for someone else, I appreciate you being here. Emily, any points you want to make at this point? No further points for me, thank you. Okay. Um, racing through, so that's responsible apologies. Um, we don't have a party, so there's no other parties here. So, Mr. Samarakis, summing up? Um, nothing to add, so I think you've heard it all. Yep, great. Okay, uh, thank you all very much. Uh, we'll now do deliberations. So, we ask you to step outside, we'll go offline, uh, and we'll call you back in when we should have. There is some comfort areas and drinks and whatever you need out there as well. Thank you very much. Make sure you take your.